So once again, I will not be taking questions. The title is just simply facts. If you disagree, I mean, take it up with my secretary. Uh, the anime guru has spoken. This is one of the greatest season guys made. And if it isn't quite there yet, honestly, you give it another season and it, it gets there. This show, I don't care if you want to say recency bias, I don't care what you want to say. The fact that we come off of last week, one of the best isekai episodes ever made, Dying on That Hill. I rewatched it not once, but twice, and I stand by that statement. But this episode, while I wouldn't necessarily put it to the exact same level as last week, the fact that I walked in thinking, oh, this is going to be a silly episode. I mean, we got this crazy biker gang riding in on scorpions, like, yeah, it's going to be a funny episode. And they still hit me with the emotion. What separates No Longer Allowed in Another World from your run-of-the-mill generic East guy, and hey, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I like run-of-the-mill generic East guy. I find them fun and mildly amusing. But there's a difference between mildly amusing and what I consider to be an isekai masterpiece, which is what I honestly think this show has reached over the past couple of episodes. Um, the idea of just having these personal stories, and I love the fact that between last episode and this, we actually have like one and done episodes where it's a self-contained story that does everything it needs to because we've had plenty of multi-episode arcs up to this point. Going out on the season with potentially just a handful of just single self-contained stories is actually really refreshing and allows for each character to feel like they've had a bit of development and when you've recently introduced a character like Nier, yeah, the boy needs a bit of time, and this episode did glorious for him. But a simple story about courage, and how most humans put into the face of danger are gonna run away. There's a reason why most people don't pick up a profession that puts them in harm's way. Because most people don't have that level of courage. And the idea of giving someone another chance, and to see him stand up at the end, like, this show is powerful, man. And even if you don't like the show, I, I don't I don't care, man. For me, this is like, you give me a minimum of another 12 episodes, I don't see how this doesn't become a top 10 isekai for me. I gotta be honest. Of course, I do have full live reactions, though, over on Patreon. If you want to see my full good thoughts to any of these episodes, you know it's gonna be over there exclusively. So here's the thing. Um, we now have sent two people back to their original worlds uh, with Sensei's book ability, right? His, his stories that he makes. And we've also shown that not everyone gets second chances. So the first guy that we sent back, I think was quite worthy of a second chance. Made some mistakes, but you know what? It was it was worth giving him that second chance at life. And we saw after the credits in that episode, you know, he got a job. He was picking his life up. The next guy, uh, pfft, rip bozo. And that's all, all he needed. This one was interesting. So they... Like, you can kind of see the trajectory of the episode pretty quickly. It was either going to be, this man turns into a wolf or a monster, and we're going to have to put him down because he's crazy. Uh, he's going to get killed by said monster uh, as he's, you know, trying to feed children and be very nice and pleasant. Or they're going to do something crazy and unexpected. And I wouldn't say they necessarily went crazy and unexpected, but it was still a bit of a twist of what I was expecting. And because it allowed for the episode to not feel completely predictable, but just function in the appropriate way. So, this is another worlder. He can transform, but the idea that, you know, in a lot of circumstances, near stopping him from killing that scumbag, maybe would feel like, why are we doing that? But in this case, it's like... It's not a matter of if this dude deserved to live or not, he, he probably did deserve that claw of death. But for a character like him, if he was to commit it, there probably would be no going back. He would feel like a monster for life and there would be no salvaging his kind heart. And the idea that we have a character who just, the fact that he lived a life, you know, he was in a wheelchair, mostly pushed around, at one point uh, was getting jumped by some thugs, and a nice guy came and helped him. And the idea that, you know, they built this friendship, and then the idea that, once again, I think it was the exact same group, jumped him, and what did he do? He ran away, or, <laughs> you know, sped away in his wheelchair, and then, oomph, truck came in, isekai him to this world. Just absolutely heartbreaking, because it's a, it's a very complicated situation that so many people would, you know, be easy to say, what a coward, what a pathetic loser... He ran away from his friend. Whether it's a loved one, whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend or a random stranger, how could you do that? What a pathetic excuse of an individual. But here's the thing. Maybe in any situation you'd throw yourself in harm's way. Maybe that is you. Great, you're one of the rare people. Not everyone is. And um, the fact that he's felt so guilty about that this whole time, the fact that his isekai, the fact that 
the reverse of it and sending him back. Not initially either. Like, Sensei was a little harsh, being like, you know, you're blaming it on the reason he ran away was because of your legs. Which is partially true, but it's also his heart. He lacked courage. And it's true, most people do. And the fact that between Sensei and Nier coming to a nice middle ground, he was able to then be sent back. truck Kun goes on his merry way to his next depressed adventurer. And the fact that he helps him up, it's just like, it's such a beautiful moment. And it shows you that humans are complex creatures. Humans make mistakes. And as much as some people want to put themselves on this moral high ground that they do no wrong, you throw them in a, in a situation, they'll always make the right decision, never hurt feelings, never break hearts, never be a coward, you're a liar. Because everyone does something wrong throughout their life, and the fact that this man felt guilty about it shows that he's not a bad person. A bad person wouldn't have showed any remorse. He would have been like, yeah, I'm in a wheelchair, I had every right. Damn it, that's... Like, if you look at the... I think it was literally the previous guy who we ended up saying Rip Bozo to. That's the type of person who would have said, woe is me. I can't believe it. I was in a wheelchair and then I get struck down. The fact that people weren't bowing to me and worshipping, like, that's... That's a bad person. Him feeling guilty shows that that's not who he is deep down. He wants to help, but he's scared. And the fact that throughout the episode, Nier has his father's sword on his back the whole time, right? There's a few points where he tries to draw, but he can't. And it's not until the very end when he draws that blade to stop him from committing a murder that would probably destroy his heart for good. It's not about preserving a life in this situation that does it deserve it or not. No, it's more of you do this, there probably is no going back and you'll be the monster you fear you are. And it's kind of ironic, you know, letting someone turn into a beast that could basically rip apart anyone when literally you felt scared in your first life because you weren't strong enough to protect a friend. Isekai World comes in, gives you this monstrous form, and you're scared to use that power because you won't be able to pull your punches. Like, it's just, it's such a complicated situation. And at face value, some people are going to want to say, oh, it's just a run-of-the-mill Isekai episode. Yeah, it's a little sad. But there's so many small nuances that if you've seen enough in this medium, you actually see how it separates itself from the run of the mill. And it's not just an average good or great. No, this is a legitimately amazing episode on a borderline masterpiece level isekai. I truly feel that. People can call me a show. People can say I'm overhyping or this or that. Hey, if that's your opinion, that's your opinion. Ain't gonna change mine. Now, of course, those are my feelings. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Uh... Definitely was a bait and switch though. The first couple of minutes, I mean, I thought we were getting a comedy episode. The fact that my boy could have turned that little puffball into a magic carpet ride this whole time and not have his bitch ass dragged in the coffin is hilarious, but um, that's sensei for ya. Let me know what you're feeling down below. Uh, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, of course, ring that bell. And like I mentioned, we have those full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. Alright, so today we got Mario Jacob, Contra Bus, Gabby, Aiden JD, Ernst Valcourt, Max the Knife, Zachary Barnett, Jonathan Vincent, and we also have Jacob the Numbnut. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care, and y'all have a good one.